Hey, good morning, YouTubers. I'm uh, I'm doing a a quick video to uh, discuss the basis for some of my my research, my latest project for creating this. Um, you know, dual opposing magnetic toroidal vortex. Um, I think it's a it's a basic fundamental principle that is associated with uh, just about every every charged particle in the universe. Um, and I think the the best model for understanding this principle is based on the Earth. Earth itself is protected by a magnetic toroid. Um, This is the basic, the basic shape of it. This is this is what protects Earth, and you can see, and, and and there is no magic about this. This is represented exactly. This is my AutoCAD drawings. Okay, this is the representation of all the way all the scientists agree that Earth is Earth's magnetic field looks around it, and uh, there's no. There's no hocus pocus with that. Um, you know, most people are used are used to seeing galaxies that look like this. And that's a typical form, formed galaxy after billions of years of, of going through its evolution. However, they start like this, and this is a nebula, of course. It's just random particles, random randomly charged particles and elements you know how many are in the periodic table of elements 105 with about seven per, uh, momentary particles but you know these formations are random they, there's no structure to them and it take as it's just like you know when we have massive clouds and they get streaming around and they get blown into each other they create these magnetic charges um, just the same thing that this does is that they get randomly moved around creating these these charges and they eventually start to form um, they'll go from that to something that is a little bit more defined always with a central nucleus is what the first thing starts it just gets that little nucleus right there and everything forms around it. They'll go from that to this, or vice versa, but you can see how it starts to create this starting stages of a toroid, and everything starts to separate and based on their polarities, based on their charges, whether they're neutral or positive or negative. They continue to create the formation. They just progressively move. And this is the creating of, of a galaxy. The biggest. You know, they'll move into something like this. They'll start to even start to pull and draw all the matter out in the you know, dark matter or whatever it is, you know, they, they start, depending on their polarities, they start to attract all these elements and they start to form this they start to form the shape of a toroid. Um, this is more probably mid-stage where it's creating the vortex. You can see the two vortexes and they are pulling in matter and stuffing them down into 
the negative, uh, the positive, and the negative containment zones. And once they, they're compressing these these particles, and once they reach their full potential, it's like charging a uh, a capacitor. It can only take so much. When this happens, they start to discharge, and they discharge through an expansion. So they compress until they get filled, then they expand. And it's the contraction and expansion of these elements that starts to create this, these toroids and this, these vortexes. And it's just like, you know, from a YouTube standpoint, the guys are doing research on creating free energy. I mean, what are you doing now? You're looking first at starship coils and the, the magnetic vortex is related to that. Then you look how that's progressed into uh, the Ronin theory, uh, vortex math, and how those those toroid coils actually achieve a far more superior um, transformation or ability to gather electrons and so that we can use those more efficiently. And it's the same thing with the development of these these vortexes, creating these toroids. This is what's happening. They're creating these vortexes and they're drawing in all this energy and that's what they're creating are vortexes, magnetically charged vortexes and if you were to look down instead of from the side like we're looking at it, these are side images if you look at from the top view coming down through the top of here, this is what, what it looks like and of course you got your nucleus and then you got your your circular toroid and the center is a vortex and the outer edges is the gathering, the materials and it compresses everything into creating the shape of the of the of the toroid. And and that's a basic that's a basic structure. Um, it creates if you were to look at Earth's toroid, its magnetic shield the magnetosphere. This is what it looks like it's in a static representation, not affected by anything. This is like a neutral thing, not being affected by anything. Of course, that's not the, what it is. Earth looks more like this, where this is called uh, what they call the, the bow, and the sun would be off in that direction. Of course, you got solar winds and charged magnetic particles hitting this toroid and this toroid um, repels uh, that energy and it creates this tail as those solar winds and stuff go past. I think a, a cooler representation of that is this next one. This is what everybody's used to seeing. This is, this is our toroid. This is our magnetic shield. A magnetic toroid and how it protects our planet. But when you take that theory and realize that that theory pertains not only to Earth, not only to the formation of galaxies, it also pertains to the matter that's being drawn into those vortexes, which is this little bad boy right here. This is what the creation of all life starts as which is a, fort a photon. It's an electromagnetic charged particle. I mean, we can, we can sp take all day and discuss particle wave theory and never really understand it, but essentially, you know, a photon is an elementary particle of quantum light. It's, uh, it's a concentrated electromagnetic radiation and uh, it, it creates some really powerful vortex energies. Um, what, what does a photon do as we know it? Um, when you put a bunch of them in a line, they look like this. That's what we call a ray of light. Of course, it goes on as long as the creation source uh, is emitting the photon. And the distance between the nucleus creates a waveform 
and that waveform is measured in nanometers and uh, that develops the frequency. Of course, we know that all light is is just a, a frequency and uh, that creates the wavelength. You know, the higher the frequency, like um, let's say ultraviolet rays, you know, you're around 200 nanometers. And you get into the visible light spectrum is around 400 nanometers, which is a, a blue, like this blue on this northern hemisphere. And then you get into the green, the yellows, and the or oranges, and, and then reds. And the, this red is around a 660 nanometer. And um, so my point here is that in discussing you know, the validity of my research as far as, you know, what a, what function a magnetic toroid has and how it relates to gravity is that, you know, charged particles, when they're fighting their surrounding fields, they're, they're in turmoil. They're being affected by gravity. It's being able to neutralize them, get them to be in, in sync with each other um, to where they're not fighting it is what we're trying to achieve, what I'm trying to achieve. And so my theory is, is simply that if, if I can take a machine and create a positive or a, a northern and southern magnetic hemisphere, it will create... Uh, a vortex and once you achieve the right resonant frequency with this machine and it gets into equilibrium with the magnetic field around it it will then be neutral and by neutralizing the magnetic field around it you are neutralizing gravity and I think that is the basis for magnetic levitation and so that's what I'm working on that's the basis for what I'm working on in terms of my motor um, let me uh, let me uh, let me get over to my uh, That's essentially what this whole thing is doing right here. I'm using those coils to spin two rotors, one positive or northern, the other negative or southern. And when you spin these two at the right frequency, It will take whatever is connected to it into, into a neutral state. You create the resonant frequency of the structure with these opposing magnetic toroids. You get them in, into a neutral state, which is balanced with its the magnetic field around it and I think that gravity goes away and so for those people who are less inclined to believe that there is some basis to this technology um, I think instead of criticizing people who are working hard to understand it and to try to prove it uh, you should spend that time more constructively and just take a moment to research that information because it's all available on the internet. 
because just like I'm trying to achieve some balance and neutrality with the structure, you know, we need to work together and to create neutrality between the people and, you know, just create some, um, some peace, man. You, you know, we can't be fighting with each other. We, in, instead of fighting and being negative, let's be positive and, and look to the solutions within ourselves. It's, and that's my basic message here is that, you know, the whole universe is based on neutrality. The, the conflict are opposing forces fighting each other, but to create neutrality from the smallest subatomic, part, subatomic particle to the largest, the formation of the largest galaxies in the universe, they're all working to, re uh, to reach balance. And so humans also need to work towards maintaining and reaching balance. And that's basically my message here. So uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, feel free to comment and watch my videos as I progress you know, in this research and the development of this machine and see where it goes. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. You guys be good. I'll talk with you later.